online qualifier, Shane Schlager, 401,200 chips. At our feature table, Gus Hansen continues to rule the roost, 141,500. Quash, Dunwoody, and Matson hanging right in there. Collins on the short stack. It seems that since Jeff Matson showed that big bluff, Nothing really has been going his way, and I don't know if that's just because the cards haven't been cooperating or because now the players have a little better read on what he's doing. Well, Bob, and coming right back with pocket jacks. 6,000 the bet. And now Matson with an ace-king suited. He is definitely going to play here. The question is, does he want to just call or re-raise? Taking a lot of chips. He is going to re-raise to 21,000. A couple of folds, three folds. Gus Hansen folds, two players. All in. And Bobbin going to go all in again with that pair of jacks. 4,600 more automatic call for Madsen. And, Barry, we call this a coin flip, but you see Bobbin is actually a very clear favorite going into the flop. Oh, and a set of jacks. For Bobbin. Now I would call him a prohibitive favorite. <laughs> yes, I would say. Well, Jax, we talked about how dangerous they can be. They've been very good to Bobbin. Well, that five gives Madsen a gut shot straight draw. Got to have a deuce. Does not get it. And Bobbin once again will double up. Now got more than four. I've created a monster. Now it's mostly. Gus Hansen saying, I've created a monster. Well, Jacks have been very good to this economist from Australia. He's up to 55,200 chips. We're coming back to the Aussie Millions. To day two of the 2007 Aussie Millions, presented by FullTiltPoker.net. You know, one of the stories we've been following today at our otter tables is the fall of our one-time chip leader, Patrick Antonius. He's currently in a hand with Mark Karam, who is raised to 8,000 with ace-10 of hearts. And Antonius, with merely a queen high here, really just can't feel good about his hand whatsoever. All in. Oh, but there's one way to change your perspective. Just push it all in and put the other guy to the test. Oh. Karam and a calls. call! Whoa, and Antonius is going to find himself a almost a two to one underdog mark Karam has a big lead going into the flop and here is the flop pair of eights and a king Karam sitting pretty right now great flop for him nut flush draw he's way out ahead if antonius loses this hand he will be down just to 2300 and chips Karam needs to survive one more card here a three of spades doesn't help him and a 10 and Karam has done it what an extraordinary reversal of fortune. Patrick Antonius, our chip leader at the start of the day, he once had more than 400,000 chips. He can barely cover the blinds at this point. Unbelievable. Mark Karam, newly turned pro out of Ontario, Canada. Two big bites out of Antonius' stack today. Meanwhile, at another outer table, Chris Ferguson's tournament life is at stake. He is all in against Nathan Bobick. Chris has nines. Before the flop, it was about even. Now, Ferguson is almost a three to one favorite. 64,600 in the pot. Oh, and there's a nine, it's over. Wow. He's gonna double up, he has nearly 70,000 chips. And the last thing this tournament field wants to see is a healthy Chris Ferguson. Meanwhile, the drama continued to unfold at the outer tables. It's Joe Hashem in a coin flip right now with an online qualifier, Teresa Harp. Nice. The flop three eights. Wow, Harp has flopped a full house. Hashem needs an ace or a jack to knock her out. Oh, he got the, the jack. jack. <laughs> And still a card to come. Looking for a nine. I can't look. No, I can't look he says he can't look. It's a ten. And Hashem has come through. A fortuitous turn card has put Joe Hashem back in contention. He now has more than 93,000 chips here in his hometown. And Teresa Harp will leave, but as you see the chip count for Joe Hashem, it certainly does make him a player. 
Well, all kinds of action on the outer tables. Let's get you back right now to our feature table where Gus Hansen is very healthy with over 150,000 in chips. The blinds continue to be 800 and 1600 with a 200 ante. Dunwoody at 10 9. And it looks like he's going to raise it up. 6,100. Ooh. Well, Gus Hansen with an ace queen suited. I don't know if Gus Hansen knows how to play cards that big. <laughs> Just going to call. And this is one of the ways that Hansen disguises the strength of his hand. He'll play that ace queen suited the same way he plays the 8 7 suited. Now Min Quach with a pair of sixes. And he too will call. And an ace jack for Jeff Matson. So he's going to push. All that calling got Jeff Matson excited. He figures this pot is up for grabs. 37,600 is the total. And now Dunwoody with a 10 9, going to forget about it here. This is by no means a clear cut decision for Gus Hansen. Ace Queen in this spot. Pretty. Ow, oh, he makes the call. No. Why did you call? I don't know. Barry Jeff Madsen thought all the calling in front yeah. of him was a sign of weakness. Gus Hansen was laying there in the weeds, and now he has Madsen dominated, almost a three to one favorite. Madsen will need a lot of help on the flop. Hansen and Madsen are two best known players at this table, but Jeff Madsen is looking at elimination if he doesn't win this hand. Deuce eight five on the flop, no help for Madsen. He'll still have to have a jack if he wants to win. Hansen has analyzed this flop and decided, well, there's no backdoor flush draw. I'm in pretty good shape. To the turn. Oh. There's the jack. Oh, man. Makes Madsen a prohibitive favorite. Wow, and when you see turn cards like that, it'll start making you talk to yourself in Danish. One card left for Hansen. Oh. It's a queen. That's sick. Uh, that's sick. That's sick. What that's sick. a card. I smelled that. That's that Gus. Sick. That sick. Madsen wow. says, I smelled it. It was Gus. Wow. A plot twist worthy of Hamlet. That's sick. And, and wow. it just seems to be a typical plot twist worthy of Gus Hansen. He just seems to do it time and time again, and he puts another player out with it this time. It would not have been fun if the queen came first. Matson's gone, and Hansen's sitting pretty. I will admit, I was going to talk into my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> the action at the 2007 Aussie Millions is just getting started. Once again, I'm the tightest player at the table. It was a day where the man who started at the top ended up at the bottom, where the hometown hero didn't disappoint, and some of poker's biggest names were sent to the rail. But it was a great day who barked loudest. For Michael Koenig, I'm Barry Tompkins. See you next time.